Hi there. Now for this part of the question, we're asked to find the minimum value of h of theta and the largest value of theta for which this minimum value occurs in this interval. Now in part b we saw that the function h of theta could be expressed in this form. If you're unsure of that part, do go back and check out the video on that. Now, for this part, if we're looking for the minimum value of h of theta, it's the sine function here that varies. And remember, sine as a function can go between minus 1 and 1. But because we're squaring this, if we let sine theta uh, or sine of this function equal minus 1, then when it's squared, it's just going to be back up to 1 again. So that's not going to suit us the minimum value will be when this actually, the sine function, is equal to zero. So that's where we're going with this. So let's just start by putting here that when sine of the function 3 theta minus 1.1071 and so on radians, okay, equals zero, this is when we're going to get our minimum value for h of theta. So I'll just put that as the min value. And what's it going to be? Well, it's just going to be 4. OK, because obviously 100 times 0 is just going to be 0 there. Now we've got to go on and find the largest value of theta for which this minimum value occurs in this interval here. So it's basically trying to solve this equation. So when is the sine of some angle equal to zero? Well, let's just put that angle down. The angle we're talking about is 3 theta minus 1.1071 and so on radians. And that's going to be equal to zero when we do the sine of zero or the sine of pi radians or 2 pi radians, 3 pi radians and so on. Now the question is, when do we stop? Okay, Which one of these values is going to give us the largest value in this interval? And we've got to be careful here. We don't just go up to pi. In fact, it says less than pi anyway. But which one of these do we take? Well, we've got to look at a new range because we're not dealing with theta here. We're dealing with all of this angle. So I'm just going to come over here and we'll just talk about what the new range would have to be. And if we start with the 0 here, multiply it by 3 and subtract minus 1.1071, then what we get is simply minus 1.1071, okay, and so on. And that's going to have to be less than or equal to, and if we do the same here, times theta by 3, that's going to give us 3 theta, and then subtract 1.1071, and so on. That's that section there. And then for pi, multiply that by 3, we're going to get 3 pi, and then subtract the minus 1.1071. Just squeeze that in there. So that's our range. Well, we want the largest value, as I say, and the one that's going to be the value that's going to be less than this one here. It certainly can't be 3 pi because we want a value less than 3 pi. We're subtracting this. And the first one that is less than that is this 2 pi here. So it's this 2 pi value that we're going to need to take. So on that basis then, all I need to do is rearrange this equation, okay, where the left-hand side here equals 2 pi. If we do that, then theta, so that would equal 2 pi plus the 1.1071 and so on, and that would be then divided by 3. And if you work this out, this comes to 2.4634 and so on. And if we give this, say, to three significant figures, it's going to be 2.46 to three sig figs, 3SF for short. 
Okay?